Okay, so we have a paper called Multi-Layer Aggregate Verification for IoT Blockchain. And just several days ago, this paper got accepted to the third conference on blockchain research and applications for innovative networks and services, which is BRAINS 2021. Um, and I've been working on this paper for a total of more than two years. It's the first project that I took up. And we presented it in 2019's 20, 20 Fabial Way, as well as 2020's. And um, I'm going to start off with the abstract and introduction um, and just kind of get everyone familiarized with these terms of IoT and IoT blockchain, ID-based signature, uh, something called aggregate verification, which can be also referred to as batch verification, uh, the agriculture 4.0, as well as supply chain management. Um, and there's, these, there's this thing called smallholder, and a smallholder is actually um, an individual that owns um, a small plot of land uh, for a farm or, you know, takes care of the agricultural um, in that uh, section of land. Um, and um, on the blockchain, we have something called smart contracts. Um, and we're focused on allowing for smallholders to gain access to loans. Now, there are several related works that I'm also going to introduce. It's called uh, distributed ledger technology. Um, Ethereum, because smart contracts are original to Ethereum. Um, IoT blockchain in agriculture 4.0, so it's kind of the application of it, as well as batch verification. Um, and now we have uh, multi-layer blockchain benefits, and so we're going to present a multi-layer ar architecture graph. Um, I'm also going to present a management framework graph, um, as well as the procedure that we use for allowing for a smallholder to register onto an agriculture blockchain that we design, um, as well as our conclusion. Um, in which we have a win-win situation for financial institutions, agricultural corporations, and smallholders as well. So the abstract kind of starts off with, we design a multi-layer aggregate verification MLEV solution to improve supply chain management within IoT blockchain. And we apply this MLEV to IoT blockchain applications in agriculture 4.0 to demonstrate the feasibility of our solutions and models. Now, in the current agriculture 4.0 structure, large companies have successfully applied blockchain solutions and ecosystems for tracking and tracing of agricultural produce, which achieves first transparency, second traceability, and third, of course, digitalization. However, these existing blockchain solutions are not comprehensive. And we kind of um, highlight three different points as to why they aren't. First, the upstream nodes that they serve are all large scale production suppliers and smallholders are completely ignored. Um, second, the majority of IoT blockchains adopt an ID-based signature scheme in IoT devices, which has been shown to have lower efficiency. And that is why, specifically why we choose an aggregate verification uh, method. Um, and finally, the third point is we design a blockchain management framework using smart contracts to facilitate the financing of upstream producers, smallholders. Now let's start off with the introduction. So digital farming in agriculture 4.0 have widespread adoption of IoT, Internet of Things, as well as big data, AI, cloud computing, and remote sensing. Now IoT produces big data, which then goes onto cloud computing in order for AI models to be able to perform analysis. Now, there is a widespread ado IoT adoption um, that is currently taking place and that will be taking place, which may increase agricultural productivity by 70% by the year 2050. However, Agriculture 4.0 has uh, several major shortcomings, including the prevention of cross-contamination, um, food pathogen outbreaks. This has very Im large implications for uh, COVID-19, as well as um, having data transparency and traceability, this is absolutely needed right now, and this is something that blockchain can naturally provide us with. Now, yeah, blockchain meets the needs of data transparency and traceability because it's, it's tamper-proof. All of the data in a public blockchain is, is, is public, and based on definition, and uh, the IoT blockchain is highly suited to ensuring traceability and consistency of information across all IoT devices in the network. Now, maintaining a supply chain management system can have high cost and have limitations in scalability. 
And so as a result, IoT blockchain is mostly suited for large companies. This needs to be what we ameliorate. Now, blockchain's democratization and increasing decentralization are what is key to our project. We provide access to traditionally disadvantaged entities, such as smallholders, with IoT blockchain technology through a multi-layer architecture. Now, we use aggregate verification to solve what we had mentioned before about the efficiency bottleneck of ID-based signature verification. And we, we use small hold, smart contracts to allow for the smallholder to gain access to loans. Some related work, uh, as well as kind of classified as preliminaries, is distributed ledger technology, which is specifically what blockchain is based off of, um, which stores, distributes, and exchanges certifications either publicly or privately, or it could be in a consortium blockchain, for example, which is um, in between public and private. Um, and you know, understanding the consensus algorithms within a peer-to-peer -peer network is fundamental to understanding how the blockchain can be applied, um, especially in our situation where we're actually providing the smallholders with, with a specific set of nodes that need to be understand how the access framework can be managed. Now, Ethereum is an open source public blockchain and they are the creators. Ethereum, um, Vitalik Buterin, he is you know, essentially the creator of the first implementation of the smart contract, decentralized applications. Now, decentralized virtual machines may process these smart contracts. Um, and a smart contract is defined to be an executable code that runs on top of the blockchain that helps execute and enforce an agreement um, between parties that do not mutually trust each other necessarily without the involvement of a third party. Now, another related work is IoT blockchain in, in Agricultural 4.0 naturally. Um, and the advantages to this are transparency, um, food safety and quality monitoring, as we have mentioned, digitalization, and what's called disintermediation, which is getting rid of the middlemen um, for the supply chain, um, as well as data security of information sharing. And finally, our final goal is agricultural finance to allow for the smallholders to be able to gain access to a loan from financial institutions. Um, and now another preliminary that we provide is aggregate verification. And so we, we define the fact that essentially it is computationally in very inefficient to have every single IoT device to be verifying the data that they're uploading. However, if we use an aggregate node, we can have a bunch of IoT devices, for example, 100 IoT devices within a greenhouse to upload all their data simultaneously and have it simultaneously in a batch verified and then uploaded onto, for example, Ethereum or Quorum. And the confirmation time in this way, um, confirmation time is defined, first of all, as the measurement of time between uploading data and attaining what's called immutability, which is making it so that you can never uh, change the data. Um, some applications of this are, for example, an IP camera in which you have, an IP camera could be uploading um, 30 frames per second times 60 seconds is one minute, times 60 minutes in one hour, times uh, 24 hours per day, that's already uh, in the millions. Now, say you have 10 IP cameras or 100, now you have hundreds of millions of pictures every single day. Now multiply that by 365, that's, that's one year. You could have billions of pictures, huge amounts of data. This is where this big data comes from with IoT. Um, how are we going to verify that? It would be extremely inefficient to verify every every single frame within a video very uh, individually. And so we designed this multi-layer structure for, for MLAV, which has an aggregator node that interacts with the IoT device, as well as uploads directly to Ethereum. We also provide what's called an IOP smallholder node. IOP stands for Internet of Produce. And we allow for the smallholder node to connect directly with the financial institution node. We have three layers in our multi-layer structure. We have the database layer on the farthest, uh, farthest outside, and this connects to our Android app that we've designed. And then the innermost layer, we have Ethereum. Now, Quorum is going to be what connects directly with Ethereum because Quorum is based off of Ethereum. We also have an a API view, which I'm going to be showing in a minute. So we have multi-layer blockchain, we have an Android app, and we also have a database layer that provides storage for manufacturers. And so this kind of democratizes um, the entire structure here. Uh, we, we design a management framework so that smallholders may a 
apply to gain access to a loan. And so first, they're going to start off by registering uh, the aforementioned IOP devices, which takes pictures periodically of the uh, growth process of different crops that they're monitoring. And you know, the I identity authentication and adding of new nodes process is then executed. We have a contract stage, we have a loan processing stage, a production stage um, I, which could be one to well, all the way to um, N. Um, crop yield not yet, not met is going to be defined as a contract breach because you have to make it based on the smart contract, you're going, you're going to have to make it so that you meet the requirements. So you're still holding the smallholder accountable. Um, while also allowing for them to have access to these loans if they have the crop yield met. And so the entire balance um, of the uh, proposed loan, of the applied for loan, is going to be paid for. And so the implementation of this from an API view, as I was mentioning, is going to be first, first layer, second layer, third layer. We have the smallholder nodes and aggregate, aggregator nodes um, in our layer one. Uh, we also have the IoT devices, which connects to the aggregator node. We have Android application. In the interest of time, I'm not going to get too much into detail, but we have Web3 uh, JavaScript API. We have a Quorum JavaScript API, which is what um, Ethereum communications is, is going to be based off of for, for Ethereum-based Quorum. Um, and we also have MySQL API for a database uh, because it's because SQL is a structured query language. It's very efficient at um, um, any form of queries on a server, on a database. And so the conclusion is that we have multi-layer aggregate verification that has high signature verification efficiency. And ID-based signature verification reduces traffic, network traffic from IoT devices, computing overhead transferred to aggregating notes rather than the IoT devices themselves. And we achieve financial institution data transparency as well as allowing for the smallholders to gain access to blockchain as equal opportunity nodes. And so that is essentially our presentation on multi-layer aggregate verification. So thank you.